Happy Saturday morning, everybody. And as usual, this is the IA Quickie Saturday morning. Every morning, just a very quick 10 minutes and nothing else. So, hope everybody's doing good. Let's, as usual, jump right in and make yes, sure. As usual, jump right. <laughs> Always have to make sure the sound is working. So, here we go. Uh, first of all, let's talk about all of the little bit of news that's out there that I thought would be interesting. Math, money, freedom. And of course, this is edutainment, not investment advice. So first of all, we look at the market. You see there's a lot of green, all good out there on the hood, and a lot of dark green as well. Polka dot, Avalanche, Solana Avalanche has just been on fire lately. My goodness. That one's a beast. See how venture capital money actually helps? Now let's talk about the altcoin season. A lot of question as to whether or not we are in the altcoin season or Bitcoin season. So it's kind of weird because Bitcoin domination is still about 43.5%. And altcoins, some altcoins are really pumping very hard. So we're right in the middle here at 50%. So we were not in Bitcoin season or altcoin season just yet at the moment. But of course, we'll track that carefully. And again, I see a big bifurcation between everything, even Different similar categories of cryptos will be in different trajectories as we go forward. So let's talk about some good news as well. Bitcoin's at an 11-day high. And why is that? Is that related to the Golden Cross a few days ago? I'm not sure, but it's just chipping away, getting up there on the road back to $50,000. The question is, once it gets above $50,000 this time, will that be the last time it'll be above it? So, And then off from there. So let's talk a bit about some of the Bitcoinization, uh, mainstream direction of Bitcoin going forward. So there's a great Medium article. Big thank you to Sanjay for sending this to me just this morning, in fact. Uh, five trends that are driving Bitcoinization. So first of all, uh, retail investors. With only 2% of the world currently owning Bitcoin, we're still very early in adoption. Retail investors still have huge potential to grow the Bitcoin market. So number two. There is also an enormous amount of money sitting on the sidelines in corporate accounts. Think treasuries. Think Michael Saylor. Think Michael Saylor times 1,000 or 50,000. That's what's out there waiting to come in. CEOs and boards are discussing this as we speak, and we expect some big announcements soon. So as usual, it'll happen gradually and then all of a sudden because of inflation, which I'll talk about in a minute. Number three. El Salvador. This is the first nation to adopt Bitcoin, but it will not be the last. A lot of rumors going around Paraguay next. Cuba have already taken a lot of steps to adopt Bitcoin. And it's just going to fall like crazy. Step number four, or the fourth reason, is the Lightning Network will likely be the technology that normalizes cryptocurrency payments in the future at almost zero cost. And number five, the Taproot Upgrade. It does a huge amount of different things, including improving privacy and the underpinnings of the ability to process things like smart contracts. And this will allow a lot more commerce and other types of functionality on Bitcoin. All these things are happening at the same time and so much other stuff too. But let's talk about El Salvador real quick. Last time I covered this, I think they reached half a million users in a week. Now it's 1.1 million Shivo users within El Salvador in 10 days. Remember, as I discussed before, the IMF and banks in the country spent 20 years trying to bank the population and they got nowhere. And now we have 1.1 million people in 10 days. So what does it mean in terms of all the stats for El Salvador. So I put some numbers together, which just to, as a refresher, and you've heard me talk about some of these before, but all on one page. First of all, 71% of El Salvador is unbanked. They don't have bank accounts, but they all have smartphones. 70% uh, receive remittances. The remittance fees eaten up by Western Union and other companies is $400 million a year. And $6 billion is received in remittances. So you can calculate the actual fees, $400 million divided by $6 billion. Uh, the remittances make up about 23% of El Salvador's GDP. And every El Salvadorian got 30 bucks in free Bitcoin to get started with their Shivo account. So 1.1 million people now have $30 worth. Now, of the 1.1 million that are now up on Shivo, that makes up 17% of the population. It happened in 10 days, which is mind-blowing. And they still have 65% of smartphones in the country to go. I mean, to adopt the Shivo application. And basically here... 
Bitcoin is winning and the pace at which it's winning is staggering. So good, big congratulations to um, El Salvador. And also to step back for a second, a lot of FUD about riots on the street and burning ATMs and all that stuff. Apparently that's all being done by the opposing party in the country, not the people. In other uh, interesting news, and I touched on this about a week or two, two weeks ago, about half of all the millionaires and billionaires in the world are crypto millionaires and billionaires. But Brian Armstrong came out and said that the existing billionaires in the world, half will be flipped by crypto millionaires, billionaires as we go forward. So think about that for a second. Um, I think it was Olaf Carlson and Balaji Srinivasan estimate that once Bitcoin hits $200,000 per Bitcoin, half of the world's billionaires will be from cryptocurrency. And uh, the type of people that cryptocurrency people are, are good people. So it means probably a lot of money will come back to society, which is good. And hopefully there will be less wars and fighting over fiat. So that is, again, another great feather in the cap of Bitcoin. So let's talk about inflation for a second. Uh, this is news from last week. But now the Fed, the New York Federal Reserve, has admitted that they see inflation at 5.2% in a year. It's already high now above that. And 4% in three years. So this is also will come with a large increase in things like food, rent, medical costs, education, you name it. It doesn't, of course, take into account some of the other big costs like real estate inflation of 18%. But the point is, now the government is, is admitting the CPI is extremely high. But what does that mean? Like 4%, 5% of a number that's artificially depressed anyway? Let's have a look. So first of all... Uh, Bitcoin will be much more of an inflationary hedge. It's actually shocking to see how much gold went down last week. Consider the environment we are in and the macro backdrop, which is stunning. Second thing, when we look at uh, the invisible thief is now visible. A lot of people weren't really aware of inflation in the past. They didn't really care. They just trusted the government numbers. But now people are acutely aware of inflation and how that eats purchasing power. But... What exactly does that mean? So here is an example, just an old, just taking a very conservative 3%, how this eats away at your retirement savings. So in the past, people just stuck money in the bank and saved money, fiat, to leave to their kids and grandkids and stuff. But this is just assuming 3%, and we know we are at 7 to 15% easily. But just 3%, it is safe to assume that if you have $100 today, in 10 years, at 3% inflation, you'll have $74 worth. But the truth is, if you assume double that, just 6%, which is under my minimum of 7%, and a hell of a lot under 15%, you can assume that basically uh, $100 today will be worth $50 in 10 years and a fraction of that in 20 years. And same thing, the cost of goods will be nearly double, assuming just two times 3%, i.e. 6%. And this is how fiat debasement eats away at your retirement savings. Everybody needs a hedge. Everybody realizes it now. And that's why I believe Bitcoin adoption will really start going into the stratosphere real soon. And the other thing is, it's very important to own hard assets. This is 800 years of inflation, and it shows you exactly where it's gone. I added a little red arrow at there at the end because I believe we are going to see incredible inflation over the next couple of years because of all the money printing. And whatever you print, it just debases. You print 40% of the money supply, your purchasing power will go down by 40% over the next five years. That is mathematically proven. So let's talk a little bit about miners and Bitcoin miners. Are they overvalued? Final piece for today. So if you look at all of the different mining stocks compared to Bitcoin over the last year and a half or so, HUD8 is up 1100%. Hive is up 1120%. It's interesting how close these two match each other. Riot is up 1,270%, and Marathon is up 3,926%, while Bitcoin is only up 428% in the same period. Now, the China mining ban really seems to have helped Marathon, because if you look at when that was put in place, how Marathon skyrocketed, but the rest have been flat. So it's interesting. If you guys are interested in me doing another analysis of those top four miners, or other miners, drop a comment below, and I'll rerun my numbers that I did early this year. But there's a lot, a lot has changed. For example, Marathon at the beginning of the year, they actually bought Bitcoin instead of mining it. I think they bought about 4,800 Bitcoin in January. for about, And at the time, I think Bitcoin is about 30,000, 31,000 at early January. So again, 
Others as well, like HUD8, have committed to never selling any Bitcoin, whatever they mine, they put on the balance sheet, and they should have about five to 6,000 by the end of the year. So if you want that, let me know below. And that's it. Quick 10 minute or less installment from me. I want to thank everybody as well for being here. And I know there might be a couple of quick stickers coming in, and I really appreciate that. Every Kiwi Robin, you are too kind. I'm the guy that owes you, and a big thank you as well to the moderators, uh, Caligula and, and Big Apple, Jeeves, and everybody else for being there, and K8 as well for the people behind the curtain. Thanks, everybody. Happy weekend. Talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>